This is Plant-Based Briefing, Guide to Electrolytes, Essential Nutrients for Hydration and Beyond, Part 1, by Ocean Robbins at foodrevolution.org. And I'm Marian Erickson. This is the Curated Content Plant-Based Podcast, where I narrate a variety of articles on plant-based and vegan living with permission in about 10 minutes or less every weekday. This article's longer than that, so it's a two-parter. I'm reading Part 1 today and tune in tomorrow for the second half. So now let's get to today's Plant-Based Briefing. Guide to Electrolytes, Essential Nutrients for Hydration and Beyond, Part 1, by Ocean Robbins at foodrevolution.org. Summary, electrolytes are more than just ingredients in colorful sports drinks. They play a crucial role in hydration, and they're also necessary for nerve function and muscle contractions. In this article, we explore the many ways electrolytes are essential for bodily functions and how to maintain a healthy electrolyte balance with your food and beverages. If you've ever overdone exercise on a hot, muggy day, you know how unpleasant it can feel. From fatigue to muscle cramps to dizziness to brain fog, one friend told me about a grueling marathon in which he hallucinated that he was dead because he waved to someone who didn't wave back. Dehydration is a serious and potentially dangerous condition. But it's not just water that your body needs in those moments. In fact, drinking plain water when you're perspiring profusely can actually make things worse. That's because the sweat you're losing isn't just water. It also contains groovy and crucial substances called electrolytes. And without them, many of your body's functions can get compromised or even shut down. That's why electrolyte sports drinks are so popular in the gym and during sporting events. But what are electrolytes exactly? What do they do? And why are they important? And are athletes sweating like wrung-out sponges the only people who have to maintain adequate levels of electrolytes? Or do the rest of us also need to pay attention to our electrolyte balance? And if so, must we gulp bright green beverages in order to get enough of them? Or are there foods or natural drinks that provide us with what we need? Electrolytes are essential minerals that carry an electric charge and play crucial roles in maintaining a bunch of critical bodily functions. Basically, wherever there's liquid inside your body, there are electrolytes present. This includes blood, urine, and the fluid inside and outside cells. Your body is about 60% water distributed unevenly throughout. Organs and other squishy bits, that's medical jargon for soft tissue, are very watery, but even your bones are 31% water. And that water is constantly recycling itself to the point where novelist Tom Robbins surmised that human beings were invented by water as a device for transporting itself from one place to another. What allows that water to flow in, through, and out of your body are electrolytes, Through billions of precise messages and measurements, they help distribute and move water throughout just about every cell in your body, each of which requires water to survive and function. The main electrolytes found inside your cells are sodium and chloride, while the most common within-cell electrolyte is potassium. Other crucial electrolytes include magnesium, calcium, phosphorus, and bicarbonate. The fancy term for what electrolytes do in the body is homeostasis, or maintaining a stable internal environment even when dealing with changes externally. But it's not just about containing enough electrolytes, you also need them in the right ratios to one another. When your electrolyte levels or ratios become unbalanced, your body may experience a number of different health issues, some of which are actually life-threatening if left untreated. What do electrolytes do in the body? So let's get specific. What functions do electrolytes perform and what happens when your levels are low or the ratios are off? There are three primary things that electrolytes do in your body, maintaining proper hydration, supporting nerve function, and enabling muscle contractions. Let's look at each of them. Electrolytes and hydration. Electrolytes help maintain healthy water pressure and volume inside and outside each cell. This ensures that cells can function properly with a balance of fluids that prevents both dehydration and overhydration. In our bodies, dehydration can have serious health impacts, including impaired cognitive function, reduced physical performance, cardiovascular strain, and decreased immune function, among many other unpleasant and potentially dangerous effects. Overhydration can be a problem, too. It happens when there's too much water in relation to electrolyte levels, effectively diluting their concentrations. It can lead to cellular swelling and an imbalance of essential electrolytes, potentially causing neurological symptoms, seizures, and organ dysfunction. Electrolytes and the nervous system. Electrolytes also play a crucial role in the functioning of your nervous system. They maintain electrical balance in cells and facilitate and generate nerve impulses throughout your body. 
The homeostatic function of electrolytes in the central nervous system is also essential for proper brain function, since your brain uses electrical signals to send your entire body messages through your nervous system, and the tissues and cells of your body use those same electrical pathways to communicate back to the brain. Electrolytes and muscle function. As anyone who has ever had a Charlie horse might guess, you need sufficient and balanced electrolytes for the proper contraction and relaxation of the three types of muscle in your body. The first kind, skeletal muscle, is what we typically think of when we think of muscles. These muscles are attached to bone and carry out all your voluntary movements, sitting and walking, nodding your head yes and no, and wrinkling your nose at unpleasant odors. Electrolytes also regulate the function of your smooth muscles, layers of which form the walls of many organs and blood vessels, and they're also needed for the cardiac muscle that's responsible for the lub-dubs that pump throughout your body. Essential electrolytes and how to prevent imbalances. You can experience electrolyte imbalances when you don't have enough or have too much of various electrolyte minerals in your body. Let's look at the specific electrolytes, their functions, recommended intake, and how to ensure sufficient amounts and ratios. Sodium. Sodium plays a crucial role in maintaining fluid balance, transmitting nerve impulses, and muscle contraction and relaxation. One potential sodium problem is hyponatremia, which is too little sodium in the blood. There are several conditions that can cause this, like certain medications, including diuretics, some antidepressants and antipsychotics, heart failure, and drinking too much water without replenishing lost electrolytes, as last seen in exercise-induced hyponatremia linked here. However, most people, especially those in the industrialized world, are at greater risk of the opposite problem, too much sodium in the blood, caused by too much sodium in their diet. The U.S. Dietary Guidelines daily value for sodium is 2,300 milligrams per day, which is a lot higher than the American Heart Association's more conservative ideal limit of 1,500 milligrams per day. But most people are consuming between 3,000 and 5,000 milligrams of sodium per day. Excess sodium in the blood, known as hypernatremia, is mostly caused by high-sodium diets. Hypernatremia is a major contributor to high blood pressure, which itself contributes to heart disease, the world's number one killer, as well as type 2 diabetes and kidney disease. Preventing Sodium Imbalances there are three complementary strategies to prevent a sodium imbalance in your body. The first is to moderate your sodium intake, which for most of us involves both eating less salt and reducing consumption of highly processed foods that tend to be very high in sodium. The second strategy is to make sure you get plenty of potassium, which is kind of like sodium's seesaw buddy. They work in harmony and help regulate each other. Too much sodium and not enough potassium, which is the more common imbalance, has heavy sodium sitting on the ground at one end of the seesaw, and potassium with its feet dangling in the air on the other end. The ideal sodium to potassium ratio is about 1 to 2. We'll discuss potassium more soon, but this is the sodium section, so potassium has to wait its turn. And the third strategy is to keep your sodium levels from getting too low, plummeting into the hyponatremic range. This is more likely to happen if you sweat a lot, ever notice that sweat is salty, and drink a lot of water without replenishing sodium or other electrolytes. To address this, you may want to drink a hydrating beverage that contains electrolytes or accompany your water drinking with a snack that's rich in sodium and other minerals, such as nut butter and celery. Of course, that's what sports drinks are, at least according to their marketing. The issue is many of them are high in sugar as well as natural and artificial flavors that can create a whole new set of problems for your body. Remember, sugar is not an electrolyte. Although it does help increase electrolyte absorption, it causes more than enough problems to make up for it. Fortunately, there are plenty of ways to meet your body's need for sodium and other electrolytes without consuming any kind of sweetener. If you're worried about your sodium levels, you may want to get testing done or see if you're taking any medications that may impact your sodium levels. For more on sodium, see our article linked here. Potassium. Potassium is also essential for nerve signaling, muscle contraction, and the maintenance of a regular heartbeat. Too little potassium is called hypokalemia and can lead to muscle and heart problems. Most cases of hypokalemia produce mild symptoms, which is a good thing because severe cases can lead to heart arrhythmias and eventual paralysis. And when it does occur, it's typically a side effect of some medications, including antibiotics, diuretics, insulin overdoses, and others, or adrenal problems. On the average, the potassium needs for men are 3,400 mg and 2,600 mg for women. In the U.S., adults tend to not get enough potassium, but the discrepancy may not be enough to cause noticeable symptoms. On average, men consume a little over 3,000 per day and women get around 2,300. Excess potassium or hyperkalemia is less common but may be caused by certain medications or kidney disease. 
The best way to prevent a potassium imbalance is to include potassium-rich foods in your diet. Some of the healthiest sources of potassium include bananas, avocados, potatoes, leafy greens, and legumes. As with sodium, if you have concerns about your potassium levels, you may want to get your levels tested or check with a healthcare professional. For more on potassium, see our article linked here. You just listened to Guide to Electrolytes, Essential Nutrients for Hydration and Beyond, Part 1, by Ocean Robbins at foodrevolution.org. And I'm Marian Erickson, your host. Tune in tomorrow for the second half of this episode, where you'll hear about the other electrolytes, including calcium and magnesium, and some amazing electrolyte balancing recipes. And please share this episode with anyone who might benefit, and thanks for listening.